I just built the best starter gaming PC on a tiny budget of $69 and I'm going to show you how you can get high FPS on a budget. Here's the 69 US dollar gaming PC for Fortnite, which peaks at over 270 FPS. But what I'm showing you right now is actually my own PC. So this is the $69 gaming PC. You may be wondering how I managed to get 270 FPS on a PC that looks like absolute e-waste. Well, I'm going to tell you how. Let's start with my strategy coming into this. I wanted to build a bare minimum for what I think is playable for Fortnite, so I decided on an old office PC as the bare bones for this build. For CPU choice, any quad core you can find should do the trick on this budget, so I went with an HP Elite 8200, which has the Intel i5-3470 for only 14 US dollars. This PC had everything such as the motherboard, case and power supply, but it came without RAM or a hard drive, so I had to get those myself. For RAM choice, I decided any 8GB stick of RAM would be fine since from my experience, 8GB should be the minimum for Fortnite. I ended up with the 2x4 8GB DDR3 RAM kit for only 9 US dollars. For storage, I was contemplating getting an SSD, as I'm not even kidding, but an SSD is like 10 times faster than a hard drive. However, storage has very minimal impact on your FPS in gaming, so I wanted to test how little I have to spend for an acceptable gaming experience on Fortnite. I ended up with a 250 gigabyte hard drive for only 4 US dollars, but I highly recommend getting a 64 gigabyte or 128 gigabyte SSD and then getting a high storage hard drive such as a 500 gigabyte or 1 terabyte. However, since I will not be using this PC outside of the video, I settled on a slow and low storage hard drive. Now the exciting part of it all will be the GPU choice I went with. The GPU I chose was the GTX 1050, which was a low profile variant for only 41 US dollars. Since the power supply with the office PC I bought would not suffice for pretty much any GPU that requires power connectors, I had to find one that takes only power from the motherboard. Low profile GPUs are great for this as they only require power from the motherboard. After I obtained all the components needed for this build, I grabbed my Windows ISO from a USB and installed Windows on this machine. But I witnessed the pains of a hard drive, the install was extremely slow and I was slowly regretting my choice not to include an SSD in this build. Once I had booted into Windows, I noticed an issue on my ceiling and here's my live reaction. What the hell? Nah, you're kidding me. So I relocated to my main setup area and dealt with the ant issue afterwards. Now what I need to do is set up the PC and download drivers and Fortnite. As you can see, once we boot it up and check task manager, we can only see our CPU memory and drive. So that means we need to download our drivers. Let's get started with downloading Google first because I just think Edge sucks. I realized how slow the hard drive is here because it took me like 5 to 7 minutes just to download Google Chrome on this PC. Now, if you want to actually use this PC, do not rely solely on a hard drive and make sure you get at least a low storage SSD as your main drive and then a hard drive as your bulk storage solution. After that, we will now download our drivers. In this case, it will be Nvidia drivers as I already have an Nvidia GPU installed in this PC. The reason why my monitor goes black randomly is because I haven't got my NVIDIA drivers yet and I'm running 60Hz my 240Hz monitor. Now to install the finishing touches which is Epic Games and Fortnite. So after booting up Fortnite I'm going to load up competitive settings and lower everything down to performance mode low meshes. Even if I had a high end PC I would still pick performance mode low meshes. So now that I have the PC all set up, it's time to launch into creative and see the highest possible FPS this PC can achieve. I started with a free build and instantly noticed to myself that this was very playable for creatives. Even with a 240Hz monitor, the PC was able to keep up high frames with only the occasional freeze or dip in FPS. Average FPS while free building were roughly 170 lows and 250 highs with some occasional freezes or dips into the double digits. Max FPS while staring at the sky was peaked at around 280 FPS, so don't expect more than 280 from this PC. But I am surprised it's getting over 100 FPS considering it's only 69 US dollars. 
Now hopping into a creative map that's a bit more laggier, we can now see that the FPS is taking a hit compared to a 1v1 map. This map is Mato's Turtle Box Fight, and we will test the PC's limits in here. This is definitely a lot laggier than before, and tends to have frequent drops even down to 40 FPS. I would still say it's playable, but it can get quite annoying with its frequent stutters and frame drops. Just taking a look at the FPS in this map, we can see that the average highs are sitting around 170 and the lows on average around 120. However, when things get a bit more chaotic, then FPS will drop down to lows of 40 and highs of 120. Now, if you're trying to look for high refresh rate gaming, you can get by on this PC, however it will be inconsistent. I doubt a 240Hz monitor will be the right choice for this PC, however you could get away with a 120 or 144 and maybe even a 165Hz monitor if you really want to push that, but the inconsistency might not be worth it. Now you may be wondering, what if I just drop the settings even lower, will I get more FPS? No you won't, because dropping the settings will decrease the load on the graphics card, however what we have here is a CPU bottleneck, which I'd say most majority of PC builds have a CPU bottleneck on Fortnite. Just before I wrap up everything about this PC, I'll give you a quick summary of how you can recreate a budget build such as this. Step 1 will be to acquire a second-hand quad-core office PC. Make sure you buy the office PC with the latest CPU within your budget. Step 2, acquire a low-profile GPU. Step 3, ensure you have an SSD. Don't even bother living life with a hard drive. Step 4, acquire any missing components the office PC may require. In my case, it was RAM and a hard drive. Anyway, that about wraps up the 69 US dollar PC build. I will do a benchmark video on this PC at a later date and I will try to compare it to my actual PC in another video if this video gets enough traction. Okay, that's about it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in another video.